Hey, Bobby Manning, welcome to Washington. On the floor here at Capital One. I thought it was still Verizon. Things changed during the <laughs> pandemic, I yeah, guess. That's right. Uh, Celtics win 116 87 was the final dominant defensive performance, and of course, a historic performance from Jason Tatum. I think uh, Jeff Twist said on the presser there that this was uh, the most 50 pointers since. Uh, the Celtic who just passed away there, Sam Jones. Mm -hmm. yep. That's how I heard it. Uh, 17th time, I believe, that a Celtic shot uh, or hit at least eight threes in a game, and he goes for nine. Uh, most efficient three-point shooting game at that volume since Antoine yeah. Walker, who had a 9-14 point game. Just 47 for Walker in that game. Uh, Tatum ends with 51, 10 rebounds, 7 assists, and just one turnover. And came back in the fourth to get to 50, hit a technical free throw to make it 51. Could have got 60, yeah. but Celtics were just ahead by too much, and he needed that rest. I'm surprised he didn't get more. But he breaks the streak early. Gets uh, that first three to go in the first quarter. He said he's shaking this off. He gets four, three more to go in that first quarter, and he was just off to the races from there. Didn't matter who was in front of him. Denny Avdia, Kyle Kuzma, big men, small men. He just blew up everybody. And Bradley mm -hmm. Beal is actually a guy who's defended him well in the past. So just dominance here from him. What do you see from him? He did a really good job reading the defense, you know. And you talk about offensively. That one turnover, that happened late in the game. You know, he was he was turnoverless throughout. And I thought that that was great, too, because he's been improving in that aspect of his game. But, yeah, this was obviously a must you know, <clears throat> not a must win, but what, is it, what, do you, what do you call it? This was like a must. Get right game. Get right game. We didn't know the extent of it. We figured it would happen, but wow, 51 points. It was incredible. I mean, he's only, what, one more 50-point game. He will tie uh, Larry Bird with, with the most 50-plus uh, point game uh, performances uh, of the franchise, which is really a testament as to how great of a scorer he is or how, you know, how much he could still be a better score than, than than what we've seen thus far, which is incredible when you think about where he is in the historical, you know, the, the Celtics history books. But, I mean, for a team that needed a win, just the morale win, he was also the guy to make sure everybody was, was where they were supposed to be, right? Like, you know, you talk about passing and we always talk about how stagnant things would get. No, guys were looking to continue to move the ball, get Tatum his shots, and even when he wasn't getting his shots, he was forcing the issue in a good way, getting to the paint, you know, blowing by guys. Transition. In transition. And, and when there was someone in front of him, he knew exactly when to pass. So it was honestly... Easily, in my opinion, my favorite uh, Jason Tatum performance this season. And Jason filled with smiles in the postgame presser, ton of jovial scenes on the sideline, and no bike, as we talked about. <laughs> uh, we're gonna go bike look. Was Tatum. We're gonna go look for that bike. Sherrod said there is one. He had probably the scoop. in the tunnel. It's yeah. probably in the tunnel. <laughs> that Tatum went to the bike, but didn't actually go there. He turned around, saved it on the bench. That's Sherrod. We'll credit him with that report. He couldn't join us here post game, but he did bring that key detail. But yeah, you. There's a sense, and I thought John said it well in the post game, that the team kind of takes on the mood of Tatum. Yeah, and he did say right. post game, I'm the same guy, whether I miss 20 straight or whether I'm scoring 50. I don't see it. There's frustration on display on the floor from right. Jason when he's struggling. And I'm sure that for a guy that leads by example, as he says, mm -hmm. that sort of filters down to the rest of the team, especially when everything's centered around what he's doing. And then for this to coincide with Marcus Smart coming back, with the Marcus Smart comments, I mean, listen, we're not going to sit here and be like, they're turning the corner here. We have to wait and see, right? But at the same time, I think it speaks volumes for someone like Marcus, who's had a different perspective, right? Being on the sidelines, seeing everything unfold. And I think, honestly, when he told his teammates that he loved them, he spoke to them one-on-one, -on -one, individually, every you know, going throughout the roster, I think it's, a, it's his way of saying, like, look, guys, like, I'm not, I know I can be Mr. Tough Guy all the time. You know, I know I can be the guy who calls people out two weeks into the regular season like he did, you know, the way Marcus has been, the way Marcus is always going to be. But, hey, I believe in you guys. And if it takes me to tell you guys or remind you, here it is. Here's your reminder. I believe in you guys, not just as a team, but individually. And I think that's great. I mean, that's what you want your leader to do. Now, the other side of it, well, the naysayers will say, oh, maybe that's his goodbye. Maybe a little bit of that. Maybe. Let's, let's let the people decide. Here's what Smart said after the game. Well, actually, before the game, I told everybody, um, you know, I pulled everybody aside right before the tip off. You know, I just told everybody, you know, I love them. You know, I love all you guys. Uh, you know, uh, I'm here and proud and, you know, um, really looking for everybody's success. You know, uh, I'm glad to be a part of everybody's success. You know, I know obviously things haven't been going our way, but, you know, we just have to go out there and do what we what we know we ought to do. You know, I pulled Jason Jalen and told them severally by themselves, and I went down along with everybody on the team individually, you know, and told them, you know, I appreciate them, proud of them. You know, this is what you do. Just go out there and do it and keep doing it. 
And, you know, I told Jalen and Jason, keep playing. Don't worry about it. And I told Jason specifically, I know you ain't hit a three in 20, about 20 attempts, you know, um, just keep shooting. I said, I'm going to make sure I find you. I'm going to get you going. I'm going to get you open. Just shoot the ball. Don't think about it. Don't worry about nothing else. Just play the game of basketball. Don't worry about anything else than playing the game. Play the right way. Defense gives you the shot. You take it. They give you the drive. You drive it. They come on your help. You make the right read. And we go from there. And uh, him and Jalen, you know, came out in the show today. So um, being able to take that control as the point guard um, and knowing and, and understanding my teammates um, was big and it was something we needed. Yeah, so it is strange. I guess the question there was, what did you kind of see when you were away? What was your perspective while they were struggling there? And he made an effort to say thank you to everybody. Mm -hmm. kind of, they, I, I guess why people could read it that way. It's sort of an odd response to that question. Well, I think Marcus also is, is a naive. You know, he, he not that he pays too much attention. It could to, happen any day. Well, exactly. Not not that he pays too much to the to the trade rumors or whatever. But I, I think he knows that. Look, if that happens, it wouldn't it wouldn't be groundbreaking, right? We've seen things like this happen in the past throughout the the course of the, you know the NBA trade season. So it wouldn't be crazy shocking to see him get be dealt. But at the same time, he's like, if that does happen, I need to get this off my chest because this has been weighing. You know, I've been watching this team the last couple of weeks, and I believe in these guys. And if I'm here to stay, then let's do this. You know, I want to let everyone know that not only do I believe in you guys, but that we can still salvage this season. It's us against everyone else. And that's exactly the kind of mindset you want this team to have right now. We talked about the merits of trading smart pregame here. Go check that out in Celtics All Access, CLNS Media. But overall, his play, plus 36, four steals right away coming hey, back. I believe he was 6 of 11 in the game as well. Good shot making from him. And just... Passing the ball, the center of ball movement, everything on this offense, when you look at an on-off number mm -hmm. perspective, and you know, that's in games he plays, too, and when other people play, it's whether he's on the floor or off the floor. The shooting goes up, the movement goes up, certainly, and turnovers go down, everything else. Like, you, all the number shifts you want to see, whether Marcus is on and then going down when he's off, that's all there. Mm -hmm. And normally you expect big defensive impact from him. Well, the offense is much more structured and communicative and just active when he's out there as well. Even yeah. when he's a secondary ball handler, not necessarily setting up sets, he's just... My, his mindset is intent on keeping the ball moving, quick decisions, yeah. as we saw here tonight. Uh, he's a big plus to be back in there, and that's sort of what makes me concerned about potentially moving on from him is the fact that this team needs a point guard bad, mm -hmm. and he's the closest that they have to it. It's like what we talked about before the game started, right? It's like, okay, people want to go out for the naysayers, right? They want to go out and trade Marcus, but they don't have a name in line to trade someone like Marcus, right? you got to fill in that point guard spot somehow. And Schroeder's different. Dennis struggled exactly. a little bit in this one, and... You know, it was more of a scorer's mindset. Smart's a facilitator mindset. Exactly. And at the same time, though, you also want to know, we have to remember that he's getting better, you know? Like, this isn't something that's going to be, you know, it's going to switch all of a sudden so quickly. But at the same time, you see the results. So I get it. You still have to do your due diligence and find out what's out there. But I'm just in the camp of saying whatever's out there, I don't think you get a better point guard in that deal. I think whoever you're trading with is going to get the better point guard in Marcus Smart in whatever trade that happens. Yeah, if they give up a different position if they're exactly if there's even a point guard coming back in return so it's a risk it's a big risk at the end of the day but you do have to explore your options you know we, we, we talk about outside shooting and look look at this game I mean good example obviously Jason Tatum you know uh, the career high nine three-pointers helps but at the same time we know how good this team can be or how dominant they are when those shots are falling you add another shooter here maybe that's worth the gamble maybe you you're, you're, you you put Schroeder in that point guard position but you're gonna miss a lot for Marcus Smart what he does defensively you know so you have to find out if that's worth the risk if that's worth you know bringing in the, these uh, type of shooters that could really elevate your offense yeah playmaking is a bigger concern here than shooting Agreed. they can get going when they get the quality it looks like they did here today and they've been producing those all year year and those are guys that you can eventually find it's harder to find the floor general who knows everybody on this roster and everything like that if I had to make a prediction just from a cap perspective and what the team looks like I don't think smart gets dealt but we'll see right. I wouldn't be stunned if they did end up making that move just to shake things up a little bit here and plus Bobby how many point guards in the NBA tell their team that they love them <laughs> I don't know. I guess we'll have to do a Come poll. On. That's that's great. That's great stuff. I mean, that's the kind of locker room atmosphere you want to have. And coming from your point guard, your starting point guard, who just came back, man, you know it's sincere.
That's sincere. Feel good night for the Celtics. For <laughs> in many different ways. For Marcus great. Smart, Jason Tatum, everybody involved. Uh, we'll be back in Boston on Tuesday at TD Garden. Great road trip here, of course. Show love to the people that make it possible. Com.com slash garden. Yes. Go get 40% off a premium subscription. Preach you guys. And LinkedIn.com slash garden. Go post your job for free. That's a big one right now. Get out to hundreds of millions of candidates and the ones that fit your job the best. I'm Bobby Manning. He's Joe Sway Pavone. Steelers Media, Celtics All Access on the road. Be tuned for more travel with this team in the February. And, of course, catch us at every home game at TD Garden.